Hi, this is Tina Sermons reporting for Kids First. And today, Heather and I have the pleasure of talking with the amazing Jared Sandrew, stereoscopic supervisor for the Walt Disney Studios. Jared was the stereo supervisor for Disney's last seven feature films, including Aladdin, Dumbo, Mulan, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, Nutcracker in the Four Realms, Pirates of Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, and The Finest Hours. He's also designed and supervised all the 3D conversion of the films. He's also supervised in cr the creative conversion of the walk in Man of Steel while, war while working at Legend 3D with his dad, Barry Sandrew, who we interviewed last week. So thank you so much for joining us today, Jarrett. Oh, pleasure to be here, thank you. Yeah, it is definitely a pleasure to be interviewing you. And a pleasure, the pleasure is mine. Yeah. So you grew up with a dad who has quite the prestigious career in digital imaging. In what ways did he influence you with your career today? Oh, well, um, we, we moved here when I was um, five years old, moved from, from Massachusetts to, to, to San Diego, actually, um, where he, was, he started a company called American Film Technologies. And there they did colorization of black and white films. And they also worked on animation. And they had um, a ton of artists, really talented artists there that were working on the colorization, but they're also working on stop motion and animation. And as a five-year-old through, I think about nine or 10, I would go visit his offices and um, I'd get to see all the things they were doing. And I'd learned about frame-based animation and, uh, he would take me on trips to LA to um, deliver tapes to the Universal Studio lot where there's a company called Anderson Video and uh, Amblin was there. And back then we used to be able to just go deliver the tapes and then sneak onto the Universal lot and have a day there. You can't do that anymore. But, um, you know, I was just influenced by how cool it, it all seemed to me. And, and um, I was always um, interested in art as well and it just kind of like mashed up he was really supportive and um i think he thought it was cool too so um it led me in this direction yeah that's definitely a great way to learn by just having someone who's been doing it and just watching after them absolutely yes so you have quite an impressive career so what exactly does a stereoscopic supervisor do so um, we work on the 3D version of the film. So when you go to the movies and you wear the, the like 3D nerd glasses or the, um, uh, the, there's some heavier red ones that you might wear and you see the movie in 3D, um, a stereoscopic supervisor is, is responsible for the delivery and uh, both technically and creative of the, um, of the 3D version. So we'll work with the filmmakers, the producers, we'll work with the visual effects studios, and um, we'll make sure that we, um, we design the 3D for the best possible experience. We wanna make sure that we're um, abiding by the director's vision. We're not right. taking you out of the movie, we're just adding to the movie. Um, and uh, we hope that it's a, an experience that people enjoy and I believe that it has gotten much better over the years. Um, I'm very proud of the work that we've done at Disney over the last few years. Yeah, that's definitely a really cool job. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's pretty fun. Thanks. So what type of educational background or skills do you need to have <laughs> to become a successful stereoscopic supervisor? Oh, Kids First is going to be disappointed in this answer. Um, I, uh, I actually, I went to uh, uh, Long Beach State for, a, for one year. Um, I majored in, or I was going to major <laughs> in, um, in film. Um, I was drawn to that school because uh, Spielberg had a degree from there and I think Steve Martin went there and I was a big fan of his. Um, but after about a year, um, I got a job, uh, I got an internship that turned into a job and I ended up working on a bunch of uh, Disney Channel TV shows. Um, you guys might be too young to know these shows. Uh, I worked on Even Stevens and That's So Ra Raven <clears throat> and a show called um, The Jersey. Um, it was, they were pretty fun shows to work on, especially as a kid. Um, I was like, I think I was 18 years old when I got these jobs. 
Um, and uh, I just kind of learned on the job. You know, I worked on the TV, the, the, uh, the, the Disney Channel shows. I learned how to do a lot of shots, a lot of content really fast. And then I worked on um, some really high-end commercials and I learned how to work on a short amount of, of, of content, 30 seconds. Um, over a month, we would work on a, a commercial or two months. And then I worked on feature films and I would work on like nine shots, which could be 10 seconds of a movie over nine months. You know, So I, I learned how to work on a, a, a very small amount of, of content, but just really put a lot into it. Um, and then around uh, 2009, I believe, um, Stereo Conversion and 3D came out, um, Avatar came out, and being a big fan of all of that, um, I got into stereo, especially since my dad was investing so much into um, his company doing that. Um, he, he was working on the stereo design of things, and I was working on the visual effects side of things. Um, I worked at a company called Sony Imageworks, and they did a movie called G-Force, which was like a hamster superhero movie. Yeah. And uh, that was my first job in stereo. And then my dad got a, uh, a contract to do some of Alice in Wonderland and asked me to come on and help him build out a, uh, a finishing and compositing pipeline. And so I came on to do that. So I kind of have a, 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 a roundabout way of getting here but um it all had to do with just digging in and and um and learning on the job pretty much that's very interesting and now i'm going to pass it over to heather thanks tiana hi jared hi heather nice to meet you nice to meet you so disney is one of my favorite companies so when you stepped foot into the walt disney studios what were your first thoughts what did you feel I mean, it's amazing. When you walk around the halls at Disney, they have um, all the old props from all the movies. I don't know if you've ever seen the Rocketeer, but there's like the helmet for the Rocketeer and there's all these like stormtrooper costumes and um, there's animation cells from classic cartoons all over the place and um, uh, just old equipment. I think uh, it's just, there's just a lot of really cool stuff. So if you're kind of a visual effects animation nerd like me, like you walk in there and you just kind of stare at the walls and you're really happy just to be in, in, the, in the building. Um, so that's really cool. I had the opportunity of bringing my son um, to, uh, to, to the office uh, a, a couple of times and just to see the look on his face when he walks around and you know, there's just Mickey Mouse everywhere and, and um, it, it's just a really fun, fun place to be. They have, uh, archives uh, that you can go to and see all the props and uh, it's just it's just a really neat place to work it's very beautiful grounds that must be absolutely beautiful to just be in that Dis you feel like you're in a Disney movie right <laughs> uh, you feel like you're at Disneyland yeah I, I'd say so it's it's fun <laughs> it's an adventure in itself definitely yeah. So you've worked on Disney classics and favorites like Aladdin and Pirates of the Caribbean. So were you nervous taking on these iconic movies? Um, you know, to be honest, these features, uh, I, I, w I would say I wasn't so nervous to take on the film. I was more nervous to work with some of the filmmakers because I'd never met them before. I don't know what their interest is in 3D. And so whenever I meet the filmmaker for the first time, I'm always uh, a little uh, nervous to see what the reaction is going to be to my interpretation of their film in 3D and um, whether or not they like 3D and, um, and that sort of thing. So that, that's usually pretty nerve wracking, but I have to say over the last few uh, years, I haven't had any bad experiences. Like all of the filmmakers that I've worked with have been um, very excited about the 3D version of the film and um, it's, I've had a couple of them say it's like watching it for the first time you know they make the film the way that they want to make it we have a couple uh, conversations while they're making it but once they start seeing it in 3D they're kind of taken aback and that's a great feeling yeah because you feel like you're actually in the movie and mm -hmm. in this world and in these circumstances so I think that's just absolutely fabulous yeah 
And is it more exciting to add stereo and visual effects to animated or live action movies? And is one process more challenging than the other? Um, I can't say, I haven't worked on very many full CG uh, features, but um, we do a lot of visual effects that are full CG. So an animated feature is, is full CG, means meaning everything that you're looking at is virtual. So, you know, if you're watching Moana, Moana is, is CG, she's, she's in the computer. And that means that the camera that's shooting her is also virtual and in the computer. So if you wanna make a 3D version of that film, you just take the, um, the camera that you have and you duplicate it and you offset it and that emulates your left and your right eye. And so it's a little easier in my opinion to do it that way because you don't have to invent everything. <laughs> so when you work on a, a, on a visual effects film like we were working on uh, uh, Mulan, we actually have to trace everything. We have to trace everything including like you know, her face, her nose, her eyeballs, her eye highlights in her eyes, every strand of hair. We have to invent information that exists behind her. And so there's a lot of like technical steps that lead up to, uh, lead up to it before we can even start getting to be creative. And so I would say it's a, in my opinion, it would be more difficult to do a, a conversion than to do an animated project but they're both beautiful either way. Yes. And now back over to Heather. Thank you. So what do you hope children and families that watch your films take away from them? What do they learn? I just want them to be entertained. You know, I, I don't want anybody to go to the theater and say, oh, I, like, I didn't, I didn't like that movie and, and, and the 3D contributed to the reason I don't like it. You know, I want people to, uh, to go to a, Go to, the, uh, go to the theater and watch a film and get engulfed in the story. And if 3D can actually help them feel like they're a part of the film, as you said before, Heather, um, then that's great. That's, what I, that's the goal. The goal is to make sure that people are entertained and, feel, and walk out of the theater feeling like they had a great time. It's also a great thing to just go to the theater. So hopefully we get back to that pretty soon. Yeah, there's nothing like the movie going experience. And when you're in 3D, you feel like you're not even in the theater anymore. So that's, that's the beauty of films. Sure. So thank you, Jared, for talking to us today. I'm afraid that we've run out of time. But thank you for talking to us about digital imaging and, and all this work. And I, I love it. I'm a fan of all the films that you've worked on. Oh, great. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, thank yes, you, thank you so sorry. Yes, thank you so much, Jerry. Your career is definitely very inspiring. I want to thank you for taking the time out to talk to us today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Tiana reporting for Kids First. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss another one of our videos. That's all for now. Bye. Bye.